right, my first project of 2021 um, is going to be this shirt. I have made it once before uh, and I generally I really like black snake patterns because for some reason they always end up fitting me. They usually fit me. Um, so um, I was stupid the last time I made this pattern before. It's this shirt that you have probably seen me wearing before. It has my spoonflower uh, pattern saying don't forget to be awesome on it and I love it even though I made some mistakes. Mistakes were made. Well, first of all it turns out that the uh, sleeves of this pattern is too long for me and I didn't realize that before it was basically finished. Um, so I had to do some operating on this that did turn out okay-ish. Um, so I'm going to do that right the first time this time. Uh, and also I need to figure out how we actually make these these things. Because I really like having cuffs. This sleeve is kind of too short. And the original of this pattern is a bit too long. Like it went down past my fingertips before I had put on the cuff. So uh, I basically had to, yeah, you know, shorten them. So I want to make that right this time. Something weird happened with the arm seam because of the... I ended up doing that by hand, it looks like. Because uh, I had to, like, this line had to be different. And also cuffs, I, uh, uh, I don't know how that happened. But anyway, I'm using this fabric. I fell in love with this fabric uh, when I was at a fabric store before Halloween. Uh, when I shop, was shopping for the Link cosplay. Black and white plaid, somehow the contrasts always seems the contrast always seemed too high for me. This is not a white, it's a some kind of off-white, reddish, pinkish, white with the real black and that it just sort of subdues the uh, contrast of it. And it is, I believe this is four meters. It is already been washed and ironed because I was smart that way that time. I haven't been in the past. Also, the collar, something I did not, I'm not sure what I was thinking about while I made that collar. Also, I like collars to be open like this. I feel kind of claustrophobic once I close it all the way up. So, I, well, I used to have this button open as well, and then the buttons keep creeping up, up here. But, what I was... God, this is chaotic. Ah, chaotic neutral. Bless me. Um, I love this style of shirt. It's a, a 1900 sport blouse. Sports blouse. It turns out that like 1900 sportswear is my jam. Um, like the bicycle... I made a bicycle skirt as well and I love that. You know the classic early Edwardian really just Edwardian uh, shirt waists that have a lot of fabric around here that are gathered together up at the neck. Uh, I cannot... I cannot with those. It's... Um, no. No. Nope. Those kinds of shirt waists make me feel like I look twice as overweight as I am. And that's not what I'm going for. Actually, it's kind of the opposite of why I'm doing history mounting in the first place. Um, so there's that, which is why I love the 
look of this. It's um, also with this shirt, I very often wear it uh, paired with my vest, my maroon vest that I love so much. It's not even funny anymore. So that's what we're doing. I am not really sure how to proceed with the uh, shortening of the sleeve. Now comes the part of the project process that I dislike most of everything, actually. Once you've cut out the pattern pieces on paper, that's because I hate that even more. But the cutting of the fabric is actually my least favorite thing. I'm not very good at cutting along the threads of things or lining up the pattern pieces or something. There's got to be a thing that I don't know how to do. The pattern does not line up on this button facing, but and like it would be nice if it did, but like you're going to see it from pretty far away and at least some of the time I will be wearing a vest on top of it so you will never actually see the fact that the pattern along the seam does not line up perfectly and also pattern matching is not period not, at least not necessarily it's uh Nope. Well, so that's done. I like how this is done, by the way. You just fold it twice and then top stitch, and then this is strong enough to keep like a buttonhole and a button. I really like how that's done. Next thing is shoulder seams. What are you doing? Filming. This guy needs to interrupt in every video. No, come back. Would you please wash away that stamp on your forehead? No. Um, let's close the shoulder seam because that's what we're doing. Where's the back piece? Many I can eat the voice on my room someday you turn out yet up around. sure how historically probable these seams are. I mean, the original flat felt seam is probably sort of accurate. Probable. But I just really like the way that these two seams look next to each other um, with the fold and the top stitch. So I just 
decided to do that on the front side because I just liked the way that that looked. Just one of those details that I... Sometimes I just decided I like things. And that is fine. Let's see, now we're on to color. And that is... I mean, it's smooth sailing until you've got like... The cuff and the vent thing. And, you know, the collar and putting in the sleeves and stuff. So I've basically done the easy stuff right away and then on to the harder parts. So let's, let's get you dressed. A blanket. She's wearing a blanket. Uh, I will not be filming while I'm, while I'm doing this because there will be profanities and uh, it won't be fun for anyone. I am quite astounded with myself for having actually done this. I mean, it looks simple enough. It's a collar stand and a collar. But like... This is what I had enormous problems with last time. You know. And now it's just fine. You know. Wouldn't choke either. So that's actually I'm uh I'm so surprised that I don't don't really know what to do with myself. It's not as how hard as I thought it would be. And now I have a collar. What the heck just happened? And now I have a collar. So that's nice. As far as I can tell, it's sort of going to be sewn on the neckline by hand. At least some of it is going to be done by hand. And I like that. I like doing stuff by hand. And uh, now for the sleeves and the cuff and all that jazz. I need to look up how to actually do that because these descriptions are, they're probably fine. I'm just, probably just me being really stupid or something. I have decided that instead of doing this placket for the sleeves, uh, I'm going to make something that looks more like this. This video was very, very, what's the word? Helpful. Uh, and I understood this way of doing it way better than I understood this way of doing it. So let's do it this way, which means that I need to cut a new placket. Two new, pla two new plackets, actually. I'm going to use those measurements. I did a vent. And it was, in fact, pretty easy. Like, I have a vent now. Uh, the video that I learned this from will be in the thing. It's a two-parter, so uh, and the narrator, she's, she has the cutest voice.
never did it. I even managed to make mirrored sleeves and not like two right sleeves. I am astounded by myself right now and I just wanted you all to take part in that. Let's do the dart and the side seams before continuing our work on the sleeves because <laughs> we all hate sleeves. <laughs> and I like how that is a it's a truth universally acknowledged that sleeves are horrible. I did the thing. I don't know why this was so hard last time, but like I managed to hide the seam of the sleeve on my machine without feeling like it was super hard. I have no idea how I did that. I apparently just did. That is a thing. It probably won't happen again, ever. Let's look at the cuff. The cuff also needs to be interlined, so I'll be doing the interlining and then... What does the pattern say? My finger is buddy. So we're getting there. Like I said, I've been procrastinating the F out of putting the sleeves in. Uh, and last night I uh, added, first I sewed on, sewed on the collar from the outside and then I spent an evening on Zoom with my choir that aren't allowed to, we're not allowed to meet IRL, so we meet up on Zoom and socialize, uh, and that's when I s I attach this by hand. They were all watching me and you know being watched while you, so it'll it'll end up a mess every time. So yeah, uh, so now I have a collar and I've been like seeing how it would look closed and I mean that is that is pretty and I probably won't choke closing it up I just will feel like I am hmm. threads I need to cut these so getting there yay <laughs> using this awesome maroon bias tape that I had on hand to cover up the seam of the sleeve 
And honestly, I'm kind of scared to put in this because like there is so much fabric on each side of this uh, this bias tape that I'm just kind of scared that there will be bubbling happening. Um, but I guess I'm going to do this by hand, so opening a few few hands sewn whip stitches will probably not be that bad. But when I've done that, all I need to do is buttons. Oh god, buttons. I totally forgot about buttons. I don't know, I, I should probably have made some bias tape out of this fabric and just made it, you know, cohesive or whatever. But, um, I just really like that maroon color. And also, I don't know, it's this color combination. I just kind of love it. So that's just, that's just my little secret. But uh, all this to say that I'm almost finished. Um, it's... <sighs> I've got buttons and buttonholes left. And I've been back and forth so many times whether I should do handmade buttonholes or machine-made buttonholes. And I've been on a uh, rampant handmade buttonhole stitch thing since making my coat uh, because handmade buttonholes look so much better than machine made buttonholes but they are so much more time consuming but anyway let's see how this shirt looks like I've been waiting to put it on well I have put it on that's And the sleeves are exactly as long as <laughs> as the others, as the other shirt's sleeve, but no, nah, maybe not. It might be like a tad longer, but oh well, this is going to be nice. Looking forward to this. Of course, it will be tucked into skirts but let's find some buttons So I guess these are the buttons, probably not all, but most of the buttons that have the right size from this box of button treasures. Now I need to just, I need to put all the non right sized buttons back into the box and also I was going to show you some honorable mentions of stuff that I always find and always find uh, sort of kind of hilarious um, whenever I look through this box so we've got this huge belt buckle thing this is ginormous and then this is rather nice I think have no idea what it is it's a button, but like 
what? And there's only one of them, so. And then of course this bell, why it's in there, I have no effing clue. And then there are a few of these, which like was a maritime a theme really popular ones from the 40s up. I have no idea. And then I don't think I've seen these before. Well, I might have. It's um what do you call these in English? There are but they are buttons. Like those loose buttons. There are two of these in here. And then there are, I just found this. Which I guess is just a really cool thing that someone found once. Uh, it's not a button. It's something else entirely. But it lives in there just because. And then, well, you can see. These are the things that I always found, find and always make me smile. So in this box there are, most of it is stuff that was in it when I, me and my grandma found it. Um, but some of it is mine. And I think, yeah, probably most of them are my great grandma's. And some might be my grandma's and uh, some are mine, like like these <laughs> that I used on my coat. I just bought more of them and I put them in here. So, and a few of the green ones. I have a few green buttons that go in here because I don't have anywhere else to put them. Which is, and all of this together is, well, the reason why this doesn't close. So, let's me put that back on the shelf. No, I, I need to put the... <sighs> these. And I have these. These are the correct sizes. And I also have these a jar of pink buttons in the right size. If that, well, I, that ever strikes my fancy. And also purple. And I believe I have a green one somewhere. That doesn't have all only the small bow, but I want to make I want to use these. I want to use some of these. Like, and these are also some of these are. I found some really really tiny ones in this pile. Like this guy, this guy right here. What? What even is he? Like, it's smaller than my pinky fingernail. And that is, like, that has got to be, like, just for, maybe it's for a baby? Like, baby's clothing? Or it might be, like, only for, as a piece of trimming? Who knows? And there are at least three of the same size. And when I do this, look through this box of treasures to find a button or four. Um, I'm always tempted to just grab four buttons out of a pile of buttons with the right size. Um, just because like one green, four white and a purple or maybe even a red. It'll be fun. <laughs> But I also kind of wanted to look a little bit serious. <laughs>
this was fun actually fun like this is probably well it's uh it's just nice really and I'll probably make more shirts in the future which is kind of what I uh it's kind of what I want to do so and also this looks nice with my favorite vest um my only vest honestly uh, I want to make another vest one of these days not this exact model because he wants to make the same thing over and over again normally I do normally I make the same thing at least twice well I made this pattern twice now haven't I I felt extremely conservative having it buttoned up all the way also at the beginning kind of choke choky um but so maybe next time i make this i'll make the collar stand a bit lower just like a tiny bit if i'm ever i'll probably never wear it like this except if i'm i can wear this at a um at um a larp a Edwardian timed LARP. I could do that and then I'll probably, I will, um, button it all the way up. I guess that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more shenanigans from me, consider su subscribing. Uh, and I'm Anne and this has been my approach.